Hello everyone, welcome back to another Game Chicken episode of Planescape Talk. Uh, I haven't played in a couple of days, so I need a bit of a refresher. But uh, I did look up uh, at the quest of giving uh, Sybil back the key uh, to escape the tenement of Fugs. And apparently she was supposed to talk to me uh, outside here when, when we both get out. But um, she never approached me. As far as I can remember, I don't think she ever approached me, so... Yeah, I guess the quest, like, bugged out, or... I don't really know. It, it hasn't... It didn't work properly, so I guess we just have to move on, and... Uh... Yeah, just forget about it, <laughs> I think, because uh, it doesn't seem to be working too well at the moment. Oh, wait, hold on a minute. Where am I now? Oh, I see, okay. Um, uh, oh, okay. I forgot there was a second part to it, but it doesn't appear to be coming up here either. This is a bad one. I'm gone. Anyway. Talk to Sebastian again, because we have to uh, do something about Dimtree, the zombie that wants to die. Uh, he stares at you for a moment and then sighs. What about Dimtree, Cutter? He wants to be released from his curse. He gives you a surprised look and then waves you off. I find that hard to believe, Cutter. Dimtree doesn't have the mental power to desire anything. He frowns for a moment. Did that idiot Hamrus put you up to this? Think about it, Sebastian. Hamrus doesn't know Dimtree is a zombie, let alone who created him, right? He sighs and seems to be deep in four. Yes, you're right, of course. Hamrus would not have sent you. I guess poor Dimtree is more aware than I intended. Ox on me for my stupidity. So you will release him. Looks at you for a moment, with conflicting emotions crossing his face. He tires and he throws his arms up in exasperation. I cannot. Sorry. Gives you a pleading look. I want to, mind you, but I cannot. I fulfilled a contract by creating Dimtree and I cannot break it. Right or wrong? I'm a man of my word. My reputation demands it. I understand your dilemma and agree with you. Could I release him instead? That will be difficult. Turns and begins to look through a nearby box. After a moment, he removes a book which he sets down in front of you. First, you have to have some magical aptitude. Second, you'd have to be able to properly speak the words you find. Page 23 of this book. On. Last, you'd have to touch Dimtree just as you feel the power of the words culminate within you. He turns his back on you and rummages through another box. I couldn't allow you to read that book, however. It'd be tantamount to me my breaking my word through the actions of another. He continues poking through the box, ignoring you. Read the book and the updated my journal. Alright. Um level up again. I need to get up and make a candlestick. Ugh. Game's getting interesting. Like I haven't even gone to the bloody upper ward yet or whatever. Be a lot more crap to do there, I'd imagine. Dimtree turns to face you slightly as you approach. You can feel a sense of expectation in the air about him. Find Master? Dimtree release? Yes, Dimtree, I know how to release you now. Dimtree turns to face you and gestures toward you. Please, friend. Speak the word Sebastian. Force to gather your thoughts and carefully speak the word Sebastian to Then reach out and touch Dimtree lightly on the forehead. Rest, rest well, Dimitri. Updated my journal. Sigh, the zombie collapses at your feet. I think you could hear a fleeting thank you, friend, as you... Looks like my skills have increased. Right. What's to listen to that guy? Oh, um... Those are... Nice. See if I can change the thief again. Should do piercing damage. Question. Hey, he really doesn't give a shit. I thought he'd react or something. He'd be like, oh god, my friend. But he's just like, nah, alright, I guess he's dead now. Uh. Pick. Go to the next area. Lurks. Actually, before I forget. Alright. That would be dumb if they try to fight me. 
updated my journal. Oh shit. I was being not blind in their justice today. The woman reaches her spider like hair and draws forth a copper earring. Here you are, pretty bit it should fetch. There are 33 coppers at the door. Long to one of my sisters, but won't be needing it anymore. You know. It's for completion of sake. We're going to the dust moon. And it's always been shield. Get in there. But you could just walk in. I have to either be snuggled in, snuggled, muggled in. Oh. A somber, pale-faced dustman in black robes. He doesn't appear to notice you. Greetings. Question. I'd like to enter the ward. Be to pay my respects to Dayanara. Oh, cool. we can All go. right. You there, hold. I'm. I look. I'm a visitor, all right. Don't need to escort me out. I'm back. My love, you have returned to me. Can it be that your memories have returned? Once again, Dayanara materializes. This time, her face is filled with desperation. Her arms are outstretched as if as she fades in. The desperation that changes to. This is what my you shall me you shall I know blah, 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 you blah. must die. I shall wait for you in death's halls, my love. Alright. I know sometimes some people have like more dialogue back. Again. I'm gone. Oh boy, Dory, I, I'm gonna get to a point where I'm not gonna know what I'm doing, but um, I have to look up a walkthrough. I hope people are okay with that. Cause, um, I need a bit of help sometimes. I remember even playing this back in the day. I needed some help to press. Oh, right, here we go. Questions. On despise of a zombie. Updated my journal. Well, I guess that pulls it. That, I guess that's uh. Oh. Down the stairs we go. Done. I don't have to pull up here. Pretty sure I still have the item needed to uh, open the portal. Yeah. Okay, just in case. There's something. I guess fine. Alright, let's sleep. Um. All right. Ah, uh, yes, I needed to. Uh, Radic or something. Oh. Finish off some. Tie off some loose ends. Radic and. Done. Good, you can fast travel between them now. Radic, yeah, Radic, that's it. Craddock. You see Craddock, he scowls deep into when you first saw him. Looks like he's about, about to crack his face in two. I found G-Lai. That right. Craddock glances around. Where is he then? Set the pike off that you were a curve of the lower sort and that he wasn't going to work for you any longer. Updated my journal. Craddock's face turns a bright red and his face cracks into a snarl. Damned be his name. May all the evils of the plain town in his footsteps. Listening stream of insults, threats, and speculation about G-Lai's family roots issue. From Craddock's mouth. All right. Ooh, Mort clicks his teeth together as Craddock builds up 
team. We can all hear him taking notes inside his skull. Craddock finishes his tirade of a grunt. Damn that g -Lie. You know I could fill in for him if he the help. Craddock studies you for a moment. Ye? Ha. Couldn't. You suddenly fall silent. Well, mayhap you can. It's hard work and there's no drinking on my watch. Understand. Let's get started. Work is long, but at the end of the shift, you are not the least bit tired. Craddock grunts as you return. You did well enough. Here's your pay. He tosses you a handful of... Now get. We have no more use for you. Jeez. Um, yeah, I guess that quest is just going to stay in there because I can't really, uh, trick. I guess I can tell him now because Aaron is dead. I'm pretty sure I think he died, so there's no harm in telling him. So, no, I'm going back and forth. Probably you yeah, know. I'm gone. Um, fun is a godsend. Annually check everybody. Great. See you, Morik. He's regarding you with a stony gaze. I spoke to Farad and discovered where Farad is getting the bodies he brings. They come from the catacombs beneath Sigil. He's taking the bodies you have buried and selling them back to you. When you bury them again, he just digs them up again. Morik falls silent. He's staring at you with his stony gaze. You're suddenly struck with the feeling that his eyes are burrowing into your skull. Uh... Morik nods. You have done a service for the dustman. Moves his hands from his sleeves and then lets his long sleeves drape across the table like a curtain. When he pulls them back, a small lapis lazuli coffin lies upon the table. It's a tiny thing, barely two inches wide and three feet long. Dustman symbols engraved on the coffin lid. As you pick up the coffin, it chirrups. Unfolds and dissolves into a stream of hundreds of copper pieces. <coughs> Excuse me. Which you somehow managed to keep from spilling across the floor of the bar. How all these coffin all these coins fit in the tiny coffin is beautiful. Yeah. Take my leave. Already. Yeah, do not What's up? Oh, he's got bloody now. Cool. I'm gone. Um, all right. Just filling that. Doing some loose ends here. Ends, bench, and then the upper wall. Ah, yes, I know. What to do. I need. Yeah. Oh. I don't know if anyone can hear that, I'm pretty sure you can't, but there's a bunch of birds fighting outside in my balcony. Really loud. I don't think it's OBS is big. Fine. No. I'm gone. I'm in the smoldering corpse. Greetings. I'm in the Hello. Who's that burning by the entryway? What about this decanter? Yes, use that on him, you'll sure become free. Oh my goodness, I await you. She pauses for a moment, dread her in her eyes. You know the command word, not yet. Go find it, I implore you. She tugs on your arm. Her eyes have taken the frantic sheen of madness. I don't know who to talk to to get that. I'm gone. Find out. I really can't find it. I'll just honest to God. Some of the things in the game I saw. Uh, I'll give myself a free pass for that. The lingering guys, rag pick your eyes. Oh, that's very villain. Hold on. Done. Barrett's. I don't, know, I don't know if his dead body's gonna be in there or what. I gotta see. Done. 
There he is. He has died. I think Anna's room. Got it. Guard's crutch. Nothing important about this bronze sphere. I don't know what, but something. One sphere. That one. Use it too. Barrett's crutch. Okay, so apparently, um, get a portal. Oh, these pots must have like a portal in it or something. Go into. Ah. You approach the archway, it begins faintly. You notice that Farad's crutch emits a simple glow. That's the archway of the crutch. There we go. Okay, where the hell are we? Farad's vault. I'm gone. Probably trapped. To be Hi. I'm gone. I don't know how long it's. They ought to be trapped. Cheese in it. No, I'll save cheese for later. Can't really talk. Um. Woody hunting. For magic. Meat. My arm. I forgot, I forgot I had my own arm. I put all my body parts in here. Being looks centuries old and looks hard as stone. A full and in here. The alcoves contain books, books and more books. They're all indexed and placed in all. Form curse. That sounds like insect plague. Old as well. Portal back to Farad's Ah, oh, okay. Finger earring. Plus two to armor class. Plus. X. Um. Okay. Crap. Nothing. Can't do anything with this earring. Not enough. What doesn't have ears? Ass eye. Oh. Angleless eye. And minus one armor versus crushing attacks. I can use it, but what if I'm a thief? Take traps. Anything Anna has. And Take out a good eye and put that in. Oh, hello. Yes. Hey. Uh, um. Head. I'm a bomb. Um. I don't know if there's more to this bolt or what. I didn't smell place. Look smelly. Dodging. It. All right. I have no idea what this fucking he does. He do anything. Time being, I, I don't remember. Yeah, there might be something, might be something I need to look up.
Go ahead, Dimitri. Frame. Um. Need frame. So I'm causing the packet of the same pain. Sell it. I think it's that useful. Ping. Plus I. I just sell it. Buy it. Um. Cranium rat tail, cover mip. That can't tell. Oh. What else have we got here? Blood charms. A lot of them. Mines. That might be useful. Maybe. Like 30 of them. Don't mind paying good money. We're really gonna go, go blow through like 50 of them. All right. In a timely manner. I don't know. All right. All right. They can fast travel in, but you can't fast travel out. Yeah, the portal comes up. Maybe Mebeth knows the man for the decanter magical lady. Probably no. No something. Let's see, let's see. Um Excuse me. Questions for you. Ever heard of someone named Ravel Mebeth? Ah! Mebeth hisses and makes a semicircle over her heart. What nonsense often you be going on about saying such a name in me presence? She wags a finger at you. Evil. Evil saying such a thing brings me Or Who you know about her? Ravel? Pah! Myths and scary tales told to children. Her voice drops as if warning you. Listen, child. No Ravel was there. Not at all. And if and there was, she got no need to be rattling that cage. I need to know all you can tell me about her, Mebeth. It's important. Mebeth frowns. She doesn't seem to want meet your gaze. Bad things. Bad things in a name. She looks back at you. Ravel's queer hag heart. Many shades of evil madness. All across and twisting like snakes. No more need be said. Let be. Let be. Know where she is, Mebeth. I have to find her. Where does one find a fairy's tale? Mebeth doesn't know. She hisses. If and I did know the no one, would I tell you? Nay. You try and dig her up and I can't have that on me mind. I can't. Seems heartbroken. But Child, if you need to know, if you're dead certain that's neither to eat me up inside, then I, I'll tell ye. Updated Finder. my journal. Ravel, Meb of size. Ravel, cruel Ravel lies in the lady's keeping she does, in a prison, a maze. Said she was put there so long ago, so very long ago, but finding it? Meb knows not the way, she sighs. Ask the festival, mayhap in the clerk's ward. One of the greybeards there may have the dark of it. No, anything else? Child, Mebbe speaks, but her voice sounds tired and broken. If you seek evil on the plains, you need not travel far. Coughs. Which knows which? Power knows power, yet there is none who knows all rivals, branchings. And... Learn your skills well and keep your lids open when new sights don't be seeming right. Trust yourself and do your trust in her. He, he, yeah. Mebbe sighs. I wish no ills upon others except that one. Glad she's gone, I am, and the cage is better for it. Again, will I say this child? Let the past rot where it lays. Let lie, let lie. Oh. Cockroach charm. Oh, not a bit cheaper. There you go. Full of horror. Full of blindness. Classify. My creatures of 
less or less in the area effect. Arm right. um, or something. Alright. If I even need more bloody arms, I'll. Done. Glad we got that out of the way. Um. There's the clerk's ward. I'm gone. <laughs> I have to determine what this odd determine, determine what this odd device is. Yeah, let's jump in the little bird, eh? Or dwelling. Alright. I know the guy there. Good shiner. Young man smiles as you enter his tent, gesturing for you to sit down. Clean and wax your boots, sir. A wanderer shine for only two copper cop. Unless there's something more to it. I'm gone. Mel. A tall, slender woman, sipping wine from a small ceramic cup, appears to be looking for someone. Her facial features are elegantly exotic, and the woman's ears, though partially covered by her long hair, can be seen to come with sharp points. Greetings. The woman turns to face you. Violet eyes flashing like flawless chips of amethyst. Her speech is as music. You hear a faint musical tinkling, a hundred tiny crystal bells as she speaks. Each word lingers in your ears as if they were unwilling to relinquish the exquisite sound. The male turned to face the scarred, thou a stranger. He asked what he wished of her. Wow. Ah, Anna sneers at Mort. Stop your drool and your leer and skull. My, what a hot blooded little chit. Star for attention. I could drool over you too if you're just jealous. Mort starts floating towards Anna, making wet slave slavering noise. Oh god. Get a hair's breath close to skull, and I'll see to it that not one of your chattering thief lies within a hundred paces of another. Mort steps abruptly, turning away while muttering in unintel. Oh, she knows the blue. And with yes. the woman makes no move to touch or examine the decanter, but only speaks. Mel took it from the stranger, turning it in her hands. Had she seen its likes before she fought? Perhaps. Yes. She remembered now. She returned the decanter, whispering into his ear as she did so. Uh, Updated my journal. Realize you know the word now. Nilden Nosage. Though you're certain the woman never whispered to you. Sorry, I paused because I was reading it backwards. But merely said she did. She blinks at you. Would the stranger leave her now, satisfied with what she had just told him? Not just yet. Are you looking for someone? Where could she be? The male wondered. Her companion, Aylwyn. Supposed to have met her here days ago. The woman sighs miserably. The air around her grows chill with her sadness. How long must she search this vast foreign city before she finds her dearest friend? Oh help. Mel clasps her hands together and bows her head to you. So pleased to hear news of her friend. Told the kind stranger what Aylwin looked like. Would know her. Would he come across her? An image forms in your mind. A woman who resembles the male but with golden eyes and hair of fiery crimson. Updated my journal. Drunken mage. This older man is staring into his stein of ale. Misery etched in the features. The battered pewter mug is an unusual one. Lightly engraved with strange runes. Bearded faces, covered with a coat of thick frost. He looks up as you approach him. Greetings, sir. He's slightly tipped. Nothing wrong? Dies, belches into his hand and nods as he takes another bail. Aye, something's wrong, alright. I've gone and lost my apprenticeship. Well hung over I was and botched my mentor's last experiment. All for this damn drink. He is at the mug in his hand, but in seconds his expression softens and he takes another swig. Ruins everything it does, this damnable drinking of mine. Why don't you stop? Updated my journal. Shrugs and sighs miserably. I simply cannot. I want to, but I cannot. I just need to drink. I try and stay away, but desire eventually overcomes me, and I cannot resist. Such a wreck I've become. Throws back the last of his ale and calls for more. I see. What's that mug you've got there? This? Looks down at the pewter mug. I won this in a dice game. It's intended to keep whatever's in it freezing cold. In my case, cheap ale. Browns rubs at his eyes and takes another swig. Drink. Ace. Ooh. This sounds like. 
The older man looks somewhat bookish. His clothing and accessories are extremely clean, neat, and well cared for, and often often pauses to brush some fleck of dust or symbol resembling a stylized dagger piercing upwards from the flame voided upon his tunic. The man's eyes pass over you, gleaming as they fix on Mort. Oh, I say, would you look at that? A floating skull. Mort turns and looks behind him. Where? Where? The man gasps. By the unjust laws of Turney the Merciless. Suddenly covers his mouth and looks at Anna apologetically. Sorry, sorry, the man was a horrible tyrant, now long dead. His name should never be spoken. So, rather vulgar. My deepest apologies, my lady. I did not mean to offend. Anna shrugs, rolling her eyes. Talk as your life, Cutter. I care not a whit for what you say unless you're rattling your bone box about me, that is. Trying to get his attention. Turns back to Mort, but behold, a skull, buoyant, levitating off the ground. Cognitive of its environment and possessing hearing, speaking, and seeing capabilities. He acts. Turns to you as if you are suddenly a confidant. It's truly one of the reasons that the plane shall never become dull to me, sir. Just when you think you have seen everything, the planes show you yet another corner to peer around. And he raises his hands gloriously. Suddenly, all new wondrous vistas are open to Actually, the talking floating skull thing is quite common. Right up there, self-resurrecting amnesiac, scouring sigil lost identities. The man ignores you, looking to Mort instead. I say skull, he begins. What gas? Look behind you, another floating skull. Let Mort have his fight. Man seems to have forgotten you entirely. Instead of turning in shock and look for his other floating skull. No! Where? Where? Right where I'm pointing, there. Where? I cannot see it. Mort speaks with mock exasperation. You just missed it. A whole parade of them. Probably never happened again in a million revolutions of the Great Ring. Turns and harumphs. I sense you also possess a peculiar degree of mockery. Mort bobs slightly as if shrugging. I prefer to refer it as keen insights into human nature. Demands detention again. He suddenly seems to see you for the first time. Man's eyes widen. By the unjust laws of Tony, the patterns himself looking apologetic. I say, are you alright? You look. Fumbles for the words. Hurt. I'm alright. Aye, it hurts to look at him, it does. Very amusing, Anna. Man nods eagerly. Of course, of course. I'm most, most happy to answer what questions I can, young Questions about you. Who are you? Why, my name is Abel Ponderful. What do you do here? I passed my administrative exam just recently and have achieved the status of an A9, a research consultant. One of the many aides specialising in situals. I research topics and laws of interest to others. It's quite fascinating, really. What does that symbol embroidered on your tunic mean? Why, it is the symbol of the fraternity of order. We are responsible for much of the law making and running the court. Many judges, advocates, and clerks are members of our order, and we are pleased to be able to help enforce it, keeping orderly. Make a str strident effort to learn all laws, whether they pertain to sigil, the planes, or the multiverse themselves. What does the fraternity of order believe? The fraternity of order believes that the multiverse is governed by laws. When one knows all the laws, one will understand the multiverse. That is our goal. For understanding the laws that limit to a cause. They mind me asking what sort of benefits are. Well, our fraternity allows us to read languages quite easily. We may use some rules of the multiverse for occasion to suit our benefits. At this place. Why is it called the clerk's war? The seat of much of Sigil's record halls and administration. Staff at these places give them the same. Many clerks, scribes, priests, bureaucrats, nation officials. Some of the finest advocates in Sydney are located here. The Civic Fest Hall, home of the Society of Sensation, also located nearby. He lowers his voice and the brothel, sir, of slating intellectual lusts. Tell me about the brothel. <laughs> he nods, looking somewhat embarrassed. Yes, well, I am known to go there for the conversation. He glances at Anna, then flushes an even deeper red. There's a large round building in the center of this part of the wall. Advocate. He's also one of the fraternity of order, though his time here has ebbed somewhat since the unfortunate troubles he has experienced. I'm not one of them to speak of them. The residence is just across the way, south and east. The beautiful structure that is both the headquarters of the Society of Sensation and acts as a arts here in the plain. It is an opera house, museum, art gallery, wine shop, tavern, training hall, theatres, auditoriums. Many things can be found here. Yeah. Tell me about the Society Updated of Sensation. Ah, the Society of Sensation. They are one of the most prominent of Sydney in faction. 
They hold the belief that the true dark of the multiverse can be known only by directly experiencing as much of the universe as possible, tasting every substance, feeling every range of emotion, visiting every place of Continues, their faction headquarters at the Civic Festival. They seek to bring experiences to all Sigil. At the moment, they are the most numerous faction on all Sigil and the most powerful. If I'm not mistaken, the most recent census of their members is over 20 times thousand members. Over. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. Uh, join me next time where I talk to this guy even more. And I'll probably look around the clerk's ward. Yeah. Thanks for watching. See you next time.